The second major class of summary statistics are measures of dispersion. Right? This is like measures of spread. Do you have high values, low values? What's the whole range of values that this data set takes on? Graphically, if we have um, our histogram, our distribution of data, then we want to know are they widely dispersed so they can take on lots of huge and very low values or are they very tightly dispersed and so all values seem to happen you know in a very well defined area and so we want to know dispersion probably the simplest measure of dispersion is the range and that's just what the word means it means like what's the range of values that our data set takes on right like if we're talking about an exam chances are the the high grade is 100 and and hopefully the low grade is bigger than zero but there will be some number between zero and 100 more than likely you know it's probably something like between 50 and 100 but that would be the range sometimes the range is expressed as um, a uh, as two numbers the high and the low so sometimes the range is expressed like this. Let's say 50 to 100, or um, let's say uh, let's say it was an easier test, and the low score was a 60, and the high score was 100. So some people might express the range as low and high. Most statisticians express range as the distance from low to high. So they would take 100 minus the 60 and say okay that distance is 40 points so what's the range of values it's a range of 40 points this is the most common among statisticians this version is a little bit more common among normal human beings but that's the range another common measure of dispersion is something called the interquartile range now, explaining this one is going to take a little bit more time because we need to kind of marry two different concepts. We need to marry the idea of what a quartile is and then marry that with the idea of a range. This one is interesting. It's not the most commonly used either by people or by statisticians. These two really are the statistician's bread and butter. Variance and standard deviation, along with the mean, will get you through 90% of any statistics project you need to undertake. But before we get there, let's just do interquartile range. To understand that, we need to actually take a step to the side and talk about percentiles first. So let's do that. So what's a percentile? Maybe it's easiest to start with an example. If somebody scores in the 75th percentile of a test, like on your SATs or ACTs, if you scored in the 75th percentile, that doesn't mean that you scored a 75% on the, the SAT. It doesn't mean you got 75% of the questions right. It means that whatever your score was, 75% of folks did worse than you. So 75% of the data uh, occur, actually equal to 75 or worse. So, um, so you got like all these scores and somebody got a, I don't know what the low score on the SAT is, a zero. And then, and then you, you know, higher numbers. Man, I really don't remember what SATs are scored on. So let's switch to, to exam grades. And there's a 90 and a 100. Maybe somebody got a bonus point. Um, let's say that this was uh, let's say that that was you in fact let's just have four students so one person got a zero one person got a 50 so student two student three student four and student five and let's say you're the lucky one that scored uh, you didn't get the bonus points you get 101 but this was you and you scored a 100 if this is you you scored in the 75th percentile that means, uh, excuse me, the 80th percentile. Because 
four out of the five scored a hundred or less. Right? One, two, three, and you, you're included. And it was four out of the five. So eight out of ten, 80th percentile. Right? If there were only four students and somebody got a, a 70, an 80, a 90, and 100, this person right here accounts for three out of the four. And so this person would be the 75th percentile score. This person here only scored in the 50th percentile because two people scored 80 or less. That's what a percentile is. It's the percent of observations that were equal to or less than that particular number. Okay, so I've got one other example here. We've got four students. This person right here at 89 is the 75th percentile student because we've got four observations. So one, two, three, including this person, three out of the four scored less than or equal to 89. And so that's 75, 75th percentile. So that's percentile. Let's go from percentile to quartile. So you've got this data set um, of four exam scores. You've got somebody scoring 60, 70, um, 100, and bonus points, 101. Since you've only got four students, then they get split up nicely into fourths. This person is the bottom fourth or the low 25 percent. This person right here is the upper 25 percent. These people in the middle account for the middle 50%. It's going to give us a flavor of what interquartile range means. Now this is a very simple example because I only have four numbers, but if I had more than that, if I had eight numbers, um, 60, 61, 70, 71, 100, let's squeeze in some numbers here, 90, 100, um, 101 and 101 again. So do I have eight numbers here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I have eight numbers. Okay, so this is also nicely split upable into fourths. My bottom fourth split is right there. My next fourth, my next fourth, and then the top part. Okay, when I split things up like that into fourths, I'm splitting it up into quartiles, quarters, right? And, uh, and so these two students would represent the bottom quartile, or the bottom fourth. These two students would represent the top quartile, or the top quarter, top fourth. Um, we could talk about the second to bottom and the, the third to bottom and so forth. Or we could just call these the, the middle 50%. Now the, when we're just to like, this is probably obvious. When we talk about the first quartile, since it's quarter, we're talking about the number that is equal to the 25th percentile. Right? So in the previous slide we were calculating percentiles. When we can calculate this, we did a bunch of 75th percentiles. That was like us calculating what the cutoff value is for the third quartile. Three quarters, 75 cents. So, um, so there's this nice little mapping between quartiles and percentiles. It's just when we're talking about quartiles we're looking at 25, 50, 75 and 100 percentile. By the way, the median is the middle value, right? And so that is going to be your dead center 
50th percentile. Okay, so we've now gone from percentiles to quartiles. Now we're in a position to talk about the interquartile range. So let me, uh, let me get a different color pen and let me keep working with those numbers now. Okay, so I promised interquartile range. Here it finally is. Interquartile range. IQR. So we want to know what the range is, the, the distance between the middle two quartiles. We said that was that was these two. These are the two middle fourths. Not the bottom fourth, not the top fourth, the middle two quarters. Now in our example, the range of this middle quartile, it goes from 70 all the way up to 100. So you could express the interquartile range as 70 to 100 if you're being kind of a normal person. If you're really a geeky statistician, you report the range as the distance between these two numbers. So you would report an interquartile range of 30. All right, so the interquartile range is 30. Now, what does that mean in English? What that means is the middle 50%, they vary by 30 points. We could have outliers, we could have huge numbers. This, rather than being 101, this could be a, what is that, a, a billion, a 10 billion? I lost track of my zeros. Doesn't matter because the middle 50% haven't changed. Those vary by just 30. So even though the range here is, you know, in the billions, the interquartile range hasn't changed at all. Which is neat, right? Because the range itself is this number minus 60. The range changed a whole bunch. The range was sensitive to outliers. The interquartile range is much less sensitive to outliers. Because we, we cut out the top numbers, we cut out the bottom numbers, we're just focusing on the middle ones, and asking how widely do those vary. So that's your interquartile range. Now let's switch over to Excel and have Excel calculate it for us.